Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, let us uh, let us uh, start. Uh, then let others join, and uh, I think there will be no problem. Uh, as I have already uh, discussed uh, some points uh, relating to that uh, great novel written by Salman Rushdie, uh, that is Midnight Children. Uh, I discussed some of the uh major points still i could not complete uh, the entire points uh, which i uh, i intended to uh, discuss uh, let me recapitulate some of the points and uh, let others to join and uh, we'll be discussing uh, so that we can complete today uh, today actually I have a plan to discuss uh, this novel from post-colonial and post-modern point of view. Uh, right. Uh, I hope all some of you you might be uh, familiar with this term, and also in MEG five we will be discussing uh, this post-modernism and post-colonialism. Uh, uh, post-colonialism uh, relates to uh, literature. fiction produced after colonialism or colonial period is over right uh, in the same way uh, post modernism uh, uh, it is produced after the second world war um, there is there is a difference the difference is that in post modern novels in post modern fi fiction uh, there is a world view but here actually it is region specific it is uh, nation specific post colonial novels are and nation specific as far as midnight children is concerned uh, no doubt it is a post modern novel still uh, as far as the region is concerned nation is concerned it is india based uh, it records uh, the history the culture the politics of india and that is why it is more a uh, post colonial novel uh, than a post modern novel uh, still a uh, post modern elements are uh, have been uh, fused uh, in the novel and as you see the plot the characterization and the uh, technical aspect of uh, midnight children uh, very beautifully uh, the author has uh, mingled so many post modern elements for example uh, we find uh, uh, in number of uh, places uh, he has used used to irony in a playful manner he has just also used black humor humor you know uh, humor is something where you start laughing what did if, if there is a black humor uh, you smile uh, in order to stop your tear that means it is a you find a mixed uh, feelings uh, both uh, you experience uh, tear as well as smile uh, because of some uh, serious this is a kind of serious comedy Uh, if it's serious comedy means uh, uh, you would be laughing at the same time you would also be weeping uh, to see the plight of the characters uh, serious things uh, uh, have been presented in a playful way so that is some of the unique features of uh, uh, post modern uh, fiction uh, now uh, some other uh, some other features let me tell you some other features have been used as far as um when nice children is concerned uh, there has been a frequent reference to uh, different uh, ancient texts uh, like your uh, vedas upanishads uh, and particularly hindu texts at the same time also uh, uh, some other religious texts have been uh, referred and this process is known as this method is known as intertextuality this is a uh, this is a critical term a new theory a post modern theory uh, which uh, uh, you will be uh, finding uh, in your mg5 actually something is discussed no in a specific way uh, this intertextuality theory is not uh, they are still uh, intertextuality means in a text uh, you find the echo of several texts the author very often frequently uh, refer to some other text here the characters particular salim uh, 
sorry to disturb sir sir uh, what what sub uh, what section are you teaching from mg7 right now yes this is uh, this is midnight children how midnight children is a, a post modern as well as a post colonial text so from that perspective uh, i am discussing some points are you getting okay, me sir. Hello, are you getting? This is not M E G five. I am not uh, discussing the theory. Just I am telling uh, how in Midnight Children these techniques have been postmodern and postcolonial techniques uh, have been used, and how uh, uh, Salman Rushdie has made uh, this novel a world famous novel, and accordingly, uh, not only world famous, an unparalleled novel, and he has achieved uh, uh, a, a very uh, a great uh, place uh, in the history of. um english fiction not only indian english fiction but also in, in, uh, in general as far as the english fiction is concerned he has attained a great height okay uh, a very towering uh, position he has achieved as far as this novel is concerned this is because of uh, it is not a simple story that is the point uh, how different different techniques have been used uh, so i am discussing it and i am uh, as i is going through your material Uh, that is M G seven material, um, block five. So I am only referring to that uh, your material, right? Uh, next is uh, uh, there is there are other uh, other techniques such as uh, pastiche, P A S T I C H. Uh, this is another uh, technique where actually um, the author has uh, made a paste. That means uh, multiple elements have been pasted. Uh, in it in a in an artistic way uh, so that is a technique which has been applied in this novel so that has made uh, midnight children midnight children novel a, a great novel a representation of the chaotic pluralistic or information drenched aspects of the postmodern society uh, no doubt uh, uh, the the history the point of history which uh, salman rushdie is referring in this novel is a postmodern history right so in this post modern history how a number of elements have been pasted together so that is uh, that has that is a, a post modern techniques uh, which has been applied here and that has made this novel very famous next uh, is it's also a kind of meta fiction all these points please note that all these points have been discussed in your uh, material and if you have material please uh, go through it you will find the same thing Uh, which uh, I am referring to. This is a meta fiction. How uh, your uh, Midnight Children? Uh, how this novel is a meta fiction? Uh, meta fiction means uh, writing without writing about writing. Writing about writing means uh, uh, when the story begins. Uh, when the story begins, uh, the author uh, speaks regarding the construction of the story. Uh, uh, through the mouth of the uh, leading characters particularly the protagonist the protagonist here solemn tells uh, what is there in his mind and what kind of story he is going to present actually the story is uh, narrated uh, through padma padma is the beloved uh, and uh, solemn uh, when he finds helpless um, at his uh, 30 that means uh, when he is uh, 31 years old uh, when he finds uh, uh, difficult uh, when he is crumbling when he is uh, not able to control as far as his physical pain and suffering is concerned as his body is not uh, helping him is not cooperating so at that moment he is taking the help of padma and padma uh, through uh, padma he is narrating the story uh, so he is uh, in the beginning he is saying what sort of story what happened to him and what happened to india and how his story and india's story is almost similar so this is a, this is a kind of meta fiction means where the uh, uh, the, the process of evolution of the story is uh, told uh, the techniques that have been used is described through uh, one of the characters so that is something uh, for example post modern sensibilities and meta fiction detect the work the words A parody should uh, should parody the idea of a parody itself. That means it's a kind of parody. Um, uh, the idea of parody has been used in the novel. 
metafiction is often employed to undermine the authority of the author for unexpected narrative shifts uh, to advance the story in a true uh, in a true uh, true and pro manner uh, in a forward and backward manner for uh, emotional uh, distance or to comment the act of storytelling so the point is how the story is uh, taking this how it is moving in a zigzag motion in a true and uh, pro mission how, uh, in a true and, true and pro motion and how um, in history uh, uh, throughout the history how uh, his memory is going forward and uh, moving forward and backward so that uh, that is a technique which has been used in this novel uh, so uh, there are so many uh, other points Historiographic metafiction, and as far as uh, this uh, midnight uh, children is concerned, actually history has been uh, pictureized. And that is why one of the critics of midnight children, Linda uh, Linda Houston, uh, is a, uh, a critic of midnight children uh, of Rashid uh, Salman Rashid, uh, a critic. Uh, he has she has. Uh, she has criticized the novel. She has uh, uh, made her point. One of the critical points she has given regarding Midnight Children that it is a historiographic metafiction means history has been pictureized. Uh, this is this is not exactly history, and uh, uh, here actually it, it, this is not the this history is not full of facts. The the history has been pictureized in a uh, by applying a technique which is known as uh, magic realism, which yesterday, uh, in my last class, I have discussed that uh, how in this novel, magic realism means uh, while uh, while describing history, uh, while um, giving dates, giving the na mentioning the name of the persons, historical uh, persons, uh, personalities, how also at the same time how uh, fiction, how or how uh, fantasy has been used, um, that has met. Uh, uh, the novel was a beautiful novel. Uh, had it been a history, only history, the novel would not have, uh, have been um, very enjoyable. Uh, the readers would not have enjoyed it uh, as much as they are enjoying today. And this is because of this use of uh, magic realism uh, in the novel. This is a technical uh, uh, word and uh, I hope you understand it. And if you read the story, uh, the, uh, you will find that this is not purely history. Uh, there is also a kind of magic uh, that is created through characters while describing some events. Uh, now, uh, let me uh, go to some other aspect of this story. And I have this material that is uh, MEG 8, sorry, MEG uh, 6, block 5. And let me uh, discuss some other points from your uh, material, right? Uh, and first of all, uh, let me discuss the uh, this character Salim. Uh, some of the points. Uh, let me discuss about the characterization and particularly as, as, I, as I have mentioned, uh, Salim's character uh, is the protagonist of the novel, and Salim's character is almost uh, the character of a um, a country, the character of a, a nation, and wh what is happening to Sol Salim, and what aspects of Salim's character uh, we can find, and how we can access, access India, India's history, how we can study India's history uh, through Salim's character. Uh, let us uh, discuss some of the points regarding Salim's character. Uh, so, as I have uh, discussed in my last class, Salim uh, represents India and Salim's story is India's story. What is happening to Salim, it is also happening uh, to the history of India, to the people of India. And it is a, uh, though it appears as an autobiography of Salim, at the same time it also, it is also an autobiography, uh, an autobiographical note of a nation. It is very interesting to study the character of Salim in Midnight Children. 
for right in the beginning of the novel he identifies himself with india its history and its destiny as he himself says uh, many times he has uh, himself mentioned that as if he has uh, that history has been handcuffed with his fate with his fate or uh, he has been handcuffed with history the history of india has been uh, attached to his life indeed he is at pains to tell us that uh, by being a midnight child a special responsibility had been thrust upon him uh, he was a, a midnight child just um, at the point of india's freedom uh, he was born and that is why uh, uh, in the novel it is mentioned that uh, jawaharlal now the first prime minister of india uh, he invited uh, salim uh, he give he gave an advertisement in the paper that uh, the midnight children uh, would be uh, awarded would be uh, recognized uh, by his government and accordingly salim saw it in the newspaper and uh, indeed uh, he along with some other children they were awarded they were uh, felicitated but afterwards Uh, what happened to him and what happened what happened to the other midnight children uh, that is a, a kind of betrayal that is why salim uh, very often uh, he has repented that in a nation where he was expected to uh, be allowed to grow up um, to make his fate uh, to see a new change in the country but he is unable to to see it he is unable to uh, find a a suitable atmosphere for his uh, growth and development so that is why uh, salim has been uh, salim story in the novel is uh, the story of repentance as well as uh, he is also it's, it's also a blame he is also very often blaming india blaming the uh, the politics of india uh, some of the politicians of his time and thereby making the whole story uh, a pathetic story that Uh, as if his dream has been shattered into uh, pieces uh, uh then uh, let me read some other aspects uh, of his life uh, now is salim a country a character or a, a paragraph or a chapter the novel is just a is it a narration or is it a life itself these questions keep Uh, cropping up in the mind and uh, uh, add to the existing list a few pages later or details of his diverse inheritance diverse inheritance means actually he was uh, he was brought up as a muslim but actually he was uh, uh, he was a hybrid uh, hybrid uh, child he was um, born out of uh, hindu poor girl and from a british um, uh, Uh, from from a british officer uh, the departing officer you know it the details mention the detail mention of a number of factors responsible for his temperament but not all of them originate in his genetic makeup rather their cause lies in a whole range of social and political events he establishes the belief that the history of his life is the history of the country and that he is the india the india is salim and salim is india going further some of the events which salim narrates have only a sensationalistic value they are less important for their meaning than their dramatic appeal salim makes great claims for the interconnection between people and events even though uh, the connection between some events and some people in his life is not clear for example his assertion that homi homi katrak was the second human being to be murdered by uh, mushroomming salim this is no more than sensationalism this naming of himself in his own narration salim and not as me in another uh, he also tells that the first person he murdered was jimmy Capedia simply because he had dreamt Jimmy's death such a serious matter as two two murders are mentioned and resolved very quickly by Salim in his narration thus suggesting that 
he is prone to exaggerating his claim to fame and notoriety. Uh, you know, uh, as far as uh, Salim's life is concerned, Salmi, uh, Salim and Shiba, uh, they were twins. Uh, they were exchanged at their birth. And uh, uh, Salim was taken and brought up by a Muslim, though he was uh, from uh, different parents, um, uh, a, a Hindu woman and a, a British man. And uh, but he was exchanged at his time of birth, and he was uh, brought up by a Muslim family. And accordingly, he has developed uh, a kind of uh, different mentality, a communal mentality. Uh, though he was not communal, but uh, the politics of that time has made him communal. And accordingly, uh, they were rivals. Shiba and Shiba as a midnight children, and Salim as a midnight children. Both of them, they were rivals. And accordingly, they involved themselves in the the history of India and accordingly when communal tensions uh, were going on, uh, a number of issues which I have already discussed, uh, how partition was there, how um, uh, Indo-Pak war, Indo-Bangladesh war, how all these events uh, took place and how they were involved in different um, historical and political matters that made them uh, rival. Though they were two brothers, they became rival and they have also uh, carried out some sorts of crimes, uh, some sorts of notorious actions. Um, so, uh, again also, they have been also uh, a victim of uh, this uh, historical moments. and as, as far as emergency is concerned, you know, uh, this is a uh, very, uh, um, very important to note that uh, Indira Gandhi carried out, so this is actually what, uh, in order to check India's population, uh, all these midnight children, they were actually castigated, they were actually sterilized. Um, sterilized means actually they were uh, undergone operation. As a result, they cannot produce any children. So this is, uh, this is a kind of human right which was denied to them. Um, so this has happened. Actually, in history, this has happened. This is a fact uh, for which uh, very often uh, the opposition has uh, attacked the government and uh, a lot of protests were going on, uh, many people were arrested, and some of the basic human rights uh, which was violated during this time, uh, which has also been mentioned in this novel, and uh, Salim himself actually. Uh, also, there is an incident actually uh, when a character, uh, they, he says that actually he has been uh, castigated, he has, uh, he has no power to uh, reproduce. So, uh, these are these helpless condition uh, of Salim and some other midnight children uh, made this novel very pathetic. And uh, uh, there are some other characters uh, I have already mentioned, Shiva, Parvati, uh, and some other characters are there. Uh, here also family as a character. Family means actually India is considered as a family and what is happen happening to India and in which way India's so destiny is, um, um, is being uh, built up, is being uh, accepted uh, in the hand of the uh, uh, independent Indian politicians. So in that way, actually, as a, uh, as a, as a destiny is framed by an individual, is built up by an, India, by an individual in the same way also, uh, here India's destiny is built up by uh, politicians, the uh, the the workers of a, of a party, particularly a political political party, that is Congress party, and uh, in that way, um, we do not find a, a healthy, um, a, a healthy uh, character um, in the novel. Uh, none of the uh, midnight children are healthy characters. Uh, they are su they are suffering from some diseases. At the same time, India's health, uh, the health of a nation, is not. Uh, very well actually as if that means a kind of fragmentation is going on in the life of the individual at, at the same time in the life of a, a nation so family as a character we find a fragmented uh, family the family has been divided into different different groups and communal war was going on uh, frequently and everywhere a chaotic situation a very uh, communal situation communal tension was going on uh, murder rape in the name of uh, religion um, 
fighting was going on so all these issues uh, all these issues actually have been discussed uh, have been narrated through different characters and we find a very uh, gloomy atmosphere a very uh, a very dark atmosphere in the novel and that is why there is a black humor uh, so it's a kind of uh, uh, technique that has been created as a result the novel is the novel gives the sense of a fragmented history a wounded history and uh, uh, in the modern time in our age actually this is a unique novel because uh, we discover a different india what has been told to us that we have a glorious past we have a glorious history but this novel actually exposes uh, a very dark history um, a very dark uh, post colonial period that india was going through uh, here also common people are also characters in the novel uh, frequently uh, some unnamed characters uh, they frequently uh, they interact with the main characters with the midnight children they are also taking part uh, in different incidents and they are also characters and they are also being wounded they are also uh, they are fate also the same fate that uh, salim is facing and uh, that uh, india is facing during that period uh, here also uh, uh, let me again uh, post colonial as i was saying how it is a post colonial uh, novel uh, for a writer who has one foot in post modern and the other in post colonial world uh, you see post colonialism actually uh, the writers of a post colonial period actually they, there are three phases uh, and uh, salman rashid rashid belongs to uh, the third phase uh, the first phase actually the writers they imitate uh, the the west the colonizers the colonial writers uh, the great writers particular as far as the english language is concerned the first the first phase writers like raja rao mulk raj anand uh, the narke narayan actually they were imitating the past how british people they were how british writers they were describing the story they were narrating the story so their techniques were followed in the second uh, second group in the second phase actually the writers they were Uh, they were attacking the uh, britishers they were blaming them they were actually um, they were uh, they were targeting the the colonizers uh, in their works of art uh, mentioning that narrating the stories the characters that they were responsible for the downfall of a nation for the suffering of, of the people of a nation as a colonizers uh, they were uh, they were they were looters they were actually they were uh, using brutal force they were actually uh, invaders they were uh, they were actually uh, for they, they are the causes for the uh, degradation of a state uh, uh, here actually many a bunch of writers are there uh, there is no need to mention the names because many many writers they have attacked uh, the britishers for the downfall of india in the in our regional literature in our indian indian english literature but uh, in the third phase uh, in the post modern phase uh, writers like salman rosdi actually he he has um, he has created a new genre a new genre means a new uh, trend of writing a new techniques in writing uh, where actually he is not only um, becoming uh, one of the important figures of this language as a uh, as a uh, post colonial writer post modern writer at the same time he is also excelling uh, he is uh, he is creating a name and fame uh, uh, as a he, he is becoming a brand he is becoming a brand among the english writers actually he is uh, he is living behind so many uh, british authors and he is uh, creating a name uh, Uh, in the field of literature in the field of uh, um in the field of fiction writing so uh, salman rosti uh, how he has and a great name and fame so as i have already discussed uh, there are so many technicalities um that is a, something unique as a result uh, salman rosti is a, 
earning a lot of name and fame in the field of fiction writing. Uh, post-colonialism, like post-modernism, is a, is a critique of modernism. Uh, but unlike post-modernism, it attacks modernism from post-colonial angle. Modernism, actually, modernism stands for what? Uh, for, for some experimentation, for some innovation, um, for uh, for uh, placing man uh, in a position uh, where actually uh, uh, it is a kind of uh, uh, fragmented uh, picture, uh, human fate, uh, human life uh, in a postmodern time is fragmented uh, for so many points in, uh, on, on, in so many situations, circumstances, uh, postmodern man actually is fragmented. It, it doesn't have an identity. But uh, as far as uh, Salman this this uh, uh, midnight children is concerned, here Salim is not uh, not at all a fragmented man. He has an identity. As far as his birth is concerned, as far as his um, position is concerned, his identity is concerned. Actually, we see in the novel that he has a, he has a, actually he has a parents. He has uh, he is we are supposed to we are supposed to grow up. In that family, uh, he has supposed to have a, a very congenial atmosphere. Uh, he, he, has, he is supposed to um, grow up like a, an ordinary human being. Uh, he, he should have a pet, um, uh, and he should he should see a life as it is. But unfortunately, because of politics, because of politics, his identity is broken. His um, his future is fragmented, and his life has been shattered into pieces so this is a postmodern uh, uh, phenomenon it's a postmodern uh, matter that how in postmodern time politics is putting man in a different position and how he is not responsible for his uh, for his uh, whatever suffering is taking place in his life for whatever odds um, and whatever uh, whatever sorrows or whatever uh, painful situation is coming in his life. He is not responsible for um, for it. Rather, the politics, some other politicians, uh, the the history is responsible to bring about a downfall in his life. So that is something uh, which is uh, a unique factor as far as this postmodern aspect of this novel is concerned. Uh, it is also Midnight Children is also a historical novel. Uh, there is no need to discuss uh, a lot, uh, which already has been discussed um, in my last class. Uh, anybody who can say uh, some of you, I think, uh, if you if you are hearing me, uh, can anybody say which are the historical events, uh, which are which are the historical events that has been uh, picturized uh, in the form of a fiction? In this novel, I have already mentioned it. Can anybody uh, share some of the uh, historical moments? I think today also I, I have already discussed it. I have already referred to it. In my last class also I referred to which are the significant historical moments, uh, historical events, uh, which had shaped uh, the destiny of India as well as the destiny of um, Salim. Anybody who would like to share, are you reading your material or not? Hello? Hello, anybody who can uh, speak, uh, who can say some of this? Yeah, I haven't received my material yet. Uh, material have okay, not received. Okay, uh, please uh, uh, download your material from the net, uh, the soft copy. Yes, sir, sure. I am, I am holding your material. I am also reading some of the lines. Uh, because I found this material is uh, very uh, informative, uh, it's very well organized, and... Um, as I was going through other materials, um, I thought uh, this material is uh, very, very interesting. Okay, uh, this is presented in a very uh, lucid manner, in a very simple language and. Uh, Surely, uh, sir, I will go through it. Okay, anybody who has read, who has read this material? Hello, no. Nobody no, has read. No, sir. Okay. Better, better you should have. You should have the material. Uh, you are supposed to download the material from the net and try to follow it. 
uh, yes, uh, some of the historical events uh, already, I think, already it has been discussed. Um, emergency there, emergency uh, was declared by Mrs. Indira Gandhi, the first lady prime minister of this country. Uh, she is known as the Iron Lady, but as far as uh, uh, Salim's life is concerned, as far as uh, his fate is concerned, his destiny is concerned, Salim makes Indira Gandhi responsible for uh, whatever um, pain and suffering is happening to him. Uh, because the Congress government uh, of that time uh, was charged under corruption in many ways. And uh, uh, she was, uh, actually it is mentioned in the novel, I am not saying from my own political point of view, uh, that uh, she was about to be arrested. Okay, political, the opposition parties, they were actually uh, targeting the government, targeting Gandhi, Mrs. Gandhi. But in order to uh, protect, in order to save herself uh, from this uh, kind of situation, from this sad situation, actually she declared emergency. Uh, she convinced the president that accordingly she signed on the document, on this actually uh, uh, declaration of emergency. And accordingly, what happened, a number of uh, human rights violations took place, uh, including castigation, which I got Sandra Gandhi, you know, his, her son, uh, she was given this, uh, she was, he, she was, he was instructed by Gandhi to carry out this castigation, this uh, sterilization of men, right? Uh, I also mentioned it uh, in this class, that how uh, Salim and many other Midnight children. Uh, so they are just the representative of that type, uh, of that uh, point of view. Uh, you you imagine how many uh, uh, midnight children, like how many um, uh, how many human beings, how many uh, young men of that time, they might have been sterilized by Sanjay Gandhi. And that is, I think, that is a, a film has been made uh, uh, in, uh, taking that. Uh, that period into account how uh, this human rights violation took place and as a result people they they lost their future they lost their life they lost their dream uh, they lost their identity so uh, this is this is not a um, small matter so that happened and that, that is actually that is uh, criticized by that is satirized by uh, rusty rusty as a, a post modern writer post-colonial writer, how beautiful actually using magic, uh, magic realism, how he is uh, magic this, uh, using this black humor, how he is targeting the political leaders of that of that time, how as a post-colonial writer, uh, though he is not staying, physically not staying in India, he is not associated with the Indian people, Indian politics directly, but he imagines, um, he imagines how uh, his motherland, where he was born, and also he had uh, his primary education here. How he um, uh, he imagines that how a nation uh, has been shattered into pieces, how a nation has been um, uh, has been broken into pieces because of this political quarrel, uh, because of this uh, political um, dark politics that uh, during that history. So. Uh, Midnight Children uh, is a, a historical novel because history has been, um, history is the raw material of this, uh, uh, the raw material for the preparation of this novel, for the um, making of this novel, and history has been picturized, means actually if you read this novel, you find so many histories, the war, the, the riots, um, okay, the communal tensions, right, and also the post-colonial uh, uh, feminism, uh, here actually there is a, uh, some female characters uh, and actually uh, they were using burkhas, particularly the Muslim uh, women, they were using burkha um, during that time, so today also they are doing, but actually here uh, she was, when she was taken to a doctor, um, the doctor says, how can I check unless I see uh, her, fa her face? Unless I uh, touch her body, how can I check check up? So the the man says, uh, her husband says actually, she is not supposed to. Uh, she is uh, she is a, 
she is uh, instructed that uh, she is she is born and brought up in a family in a community where um, where parda is the identity of that woman and she cannot um, remove her parda in her bell and better uh, you uh, you check up uh, by just uh, um, just uh, imagining or by just thinking what whatever she says and accordingly you try to uh prescribe some medicine so actually uh, she uh, she hold she held a, a piece of paper a cardboard uh, where actually a poor was made uh, some holes were made and accordingly uh, she spoke uh, to the doctor that okay this thing happened to me and i am feeling bad and uh, uh, this is the problem of my health and accordingly the doctor said okay so actually this uh, while narrating this uh, situation Salman Rushdie actually also showing uh, the feminism, the post-colonial feminism. Uh, even after uh, the colonial period is over, uh, the the tradition, the culture of a community continues uh, to remain same, and um, uh, and this is actually coming in picture. Uh, and uh, also we find uh, a culture, uh, a tradition that post-colonial India. Uh, was passing through and uh, this colonial uh, however powerful uh, this colonial power uh, however uh, forceful it may be it has not been able to uh, finish the culture of india the tradition of india the communities they have their uh, cultures they have their traditions they have their ethos um, flowing in the same manner and uh, this is the identity of india in spite of the fact that Uh, there were colonizers there there was a different culture western culture this westernization has not been able to finish the eastern culture the indian culture the mixed culture not only uh, this islamic culture at the same time hindu culture sikh culture so there is a mixed culture and salim represents this mixed culture uh, in a perfect manner he is the product of a uh a hindu and uh, christianity at the same time when he is brought up in a muslim family so he has learned he has uh he has been exposed to all these muslim culture and traditions and he is a uh, he represents the ideal india uh, the uh, the positive aspects of uh india as a nation so uh, it is a historical novel it is a post colonial novel it is also uh a post modern novel and it is also uh, a a different novel uh, where uh, history has give, has been uh, the raw material of this novel and with this uh, because i have to again go to uh, my office because of some work or because of some official uh, assignment that my principal has given so i i have to uh um i have to complete this uh discussion here and uh, I, again i would allow to uh, ask me some questions if you have in your mind as far as this novel is concerned and i hope uh you will read at home your uh, materials uh, it's a beautiful material i hope uh, you can uh, give email to uh, ignu uh, because the op- the authority uh, uh, who are in charge of Uh, the supplying your uh, material uh, perhaps because of this uh, pandemic situation they have not been able to uh, send you the material uh, uh, if you write that you have not got it you have not received uh, they may uh, they may take action or uh, as they have been telling us uh, frequently that if somebody is uh, making a complaint that uh, your she has not received the material so better they should be advised to download the material from the site uh, igno site and uh, thereby uh, they should continue the their study um, if if, if uh, printed copy is not available is not uh, reached so better to use the soft copy and also uh, uh, you are uh, you are actually uh, you are free to Uh, go through the different sites uh, websites uh, where uh, soft material is available uh, also lectures are available uh, 
interpretation is available, analysis is available. So, so many sites are there. Uh, you just type uh, Midnight Children as a post-colonial novel, as a historical novel, as a post-modern novel, you will get a lot of material. So, uh, if you have a, a time uh, to spend, uh, to study, uh, then definitely you will get the material. Uh, don't worry for that. Uh, so, with this, uh, anybody, I would like to request you, if you have uh, some questions in your mind, uh, you please ask me. Otherwise, uh, uh, the next time, uh, we'll be discussing with uh, another novel, that is Anita Desai's uh, novel, uh, Clear Light of the Day. Uh, before I start that, uh, please, uh, you read that text if you can. Uh, if you have a text or if you have time, if you have a, a leisure, please go through it. Uh, read some of the portions of that novel and come for discussion. Yes, any question to me? Sir, when will be the next class going to happen? Uh, next class, uh, day after tomorrow. Actually, the see, Professor Aditya Mehar, uh, he is uh, supposed to take your class. And I have got, got only MEG 5. MEG 5 and MEG 16. MEG 16, um, there are few students and uh, when the attendance uh, became very low, only five, three, four, five students they attended. Uh, we took uh, two classes, and that classes was suspended by IGNU. Uh, though they are trying now, the MEG 16 students they are trying. They have also written a mail, but actually IGNU is not hearing. Uh, IGNU says uh, minimum uh, ten students should remain present uh, in the class, and that class will be counted. Otherwise, the class will be suspended. So I don't have any control of the class. Uh, the class is controlled by Professor Dolly. Uh, in our institution, in our center, and he has been instructed by IGNU that minimum 10 students should remain present in the class. And accordingly, uh, my IGNU 16 class has been suspended. Uh, I am now taking only MEG 5. And this class has been uh, shifted to me uh, because Professor uh, Meher, Meher sir actually, he has some problems and he is not able to attack this MEG 7 class. So, uh, as this class was going to be dropped, so I, I was forced to uh, take this class. Uh, in spite of the fact that we have a great load uh, in our office, um, still we have been managing. Um, Thanks, sir, for trying. your efforts. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, you will cooperate with me. And uh, I would like to request, please uh, read your text, read your uh, material, and then try to... Uh, hear something uh, from the counselor. Uh, we are the counselors. So we are not physically uh, in a physical mode. We are not taking your class, so that uh, the chair would have been something different, uh, right? So in a online mode, uh, I think uh, communication doesn't take place so well. Still, uh, we are trying to help you, and accordingly, uh, um, we are taking this class and trying to cover up uh, whatever um, classes are left, it will be covered. And uh, yes, I hope... I hope have that... a question. Can yes, I yes, madam. Yes, yes, madam. Sir, you said that there were three waves uh, of uh, Indian writers. The first one uh, were uh, imitating the British and second were attacking them. And third one is Salman Rushdie's age. So, can you give an, give example of the second one also, like what was the timeline and writers uh, where they were uh, attacking the West? You see, uh, so you forget the uh, fiction. Uh, you come mm -hmm. to Indian films. Logan, uh, you see, Logan, Logan film. Have you uh, have you seen Logan film? Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes sir. Logan film, and there is a Gora uh, uh, fiction. You know. Uh, Bengali? Mm -hmm. What fiction have you read? No, sir. Uh, no, actually. You see, not only in Indian English fiction, in any colonial country, any literature has a common uh, platform. Uh, it's a common medium of uh, expression, uh, a medium of education, medium of ref uh, reformation, medium of change. Actually, uh, any literature, you find a lot of attack uh, have been made 
थ्रू फिल्म्स थ्रू सीरियल्स थ्रू एनी स्टोरीज मे बी शॉर्ट स्टोरी मे बी फिक्सर मे बी प्रोज इट डजेंट मैटर सो वेरियस सेवरल टाइम टाइम्स एक्चुअली इन सेवरल वर्क्स ऑफ आर्ट मे बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ पोएट्री फिक्सर व्हाट एवर इट मे बी अटैक्स हैव बीन मेड टू आल्सो इन मिडनाइट चिल्ड्रन दैट हैज बीन अटैक इफ यू यू गो टू योर मटेरियल और द स्टोरी you will find that uh, here actually many british characters uh, they have been attacked that means they are way of uh, uh, lifestyle their way of their behavior their behavior uh, is not in favor of india here actually you find that uh, that british officer the father of salim that british officer has uh, has mentioned four names uh, four names Uh, actually, I was going through your material, and I saw uh, I, I read this point. Four uh, uh, mentions. Actually, he has mentioned uh, according to British uh, culture, according to British tradition, British uh, uh, society. He was always uh, mentioning uh, whatever beautiful thing, uh, whatever um, uh, beautiful, maybe a beautiful piece of art or a mansion or a building. or a bridge whatever whatever he was uh, coming across he was naming it he was giving british name always he was giving british name and this proves that actually uh, how colonial colonial powers how colonial uh, characters how in their mind they uh, they were having they were thinking that they were having a um, superior culture and india is a an inferior land okay and because of this um, Uh, superior complexity uh, they were uh, not only ruling us at the same time they were also uh, targeting our culture our tradition our uh, everything okay so they, they were trying to uh, doing what it, it, they were actually trying to impose this is a kind of imperial imposition and uh, uh, this novel also carries uh, some instances where uh, some british characters Uh, some british people are actually they were uh, uh, they were having this sorts of this sort of mind uh, they were imposing they were also uh, targeting the culture and uh, you see the so this actually divide and rule policy actually this was uh, quite unfamiliar, um, unfamiliar to india uh, our people uh, took it from britishers um, if today it is practiced actually this is a gift of uh, the western uh, people so uh, and this this sort of things have been um, attacked by many poets writers uh, so i can, I, I, i hope uh, in course of your study uh, you will discover a number of writers a number of things a number of uh, poetry a number of fictions um, maybe short story maybe novel maybe drama maybe film maybe whatever maybe in english in maybe in hindi or odia or any language right uh in uh, your uh, arkanarayan story uh, you know uh, uh, malgudi days i hope you know you have seen malgudi days there are so many stories uh, where actually uh, british characters british society british western people they have been attacked so i hope uh, you have understood uh, we will be discussing the next block uh, day after tomorrow and i hope your full cooperation for it thank you thank you sir thank you sir